good day guys and welcome to this video so in this video we'll be looking at another linear programming problem solving it with graphical method so we're going to be solving this particular program with graphical method now just like the other we, we did simplex algorithm we're going to be what looking for a way to optimize this z in this particular set of equations because z is subjected to one two three equations here so when do you use graphical method in the first place you use graphical method if and only if the equation has just two variables. Yeah, we have just x1 and x2. There is no x3 or x4. So once you have just two variables, either you have three equations or two equations or four equations, then you are in the best position to use the graphical method. So now, first approach you want to do is, want to use this equation to get values for x1 when x2 is 0 and x2 when x1 is 0. So you can be able to plot those graphs against each other. So we start by saying, so for the first equation, we have 2x1 plus x2. And then we equate it to the right hand side, which is equal to 100. So we say when x1 is equal to 0. And we also do when x2 equals 0. So when x1 equals 0, we have what? 2 into 0 plus x2 equals 100. It means 0 plus x2 equals 100. So yeah, x2 is equal to 100. So this particular coordinate is what? 0, 100. This is x1, x2. Meaning when x1 is 0, x2 is 100. So for the second, when we want to make, now let's make x2 here now, equals 0, to get the value for x1. So if you want to get the value for x1, we say 2x1 plus 0 equals to 100. This is 2x1 equals to 100. x1 is equals to 100 over 2. Then x1 is equals to 50. So here yeah, we can detect that since x1 is 50, our x1, comma x2 is going to be what? 50, comma 0. So now we have two coordinates in our graph already. 100, comma 0, comma 100 and 50, comma 0. So the same way you did it for here is what I'm going to do for the second equation. This is equation 1, equation 2 and equation 3. So the same thing for equation 1. This way you're going to, you're going to do for equation 2 and equation 3. So I'll pause the video now do them so we don't get to waste much time in this video so yes guys this is the completion of the equation so as you can see here x1 plus x2 for the second one we have these values when x1 is 0 x2 equals to 80 that is 0 comma 80 and when x2 is 0 x1 is definitely going to be 80 that is a point of 80 comma 0 so this third one as you can see is just a linear this is just one variable x1 equals 40 so if you want to equate x1 to 0 they are definitely not having any value here and this is what we are going to focus on since this is x1 and there is no x2 which is 0 equals 40 so here we have what x1 is equals to 40 so this is point 40 comma 0 so now we are now going to draw a kind of like a table for our values of x1 and x2 so we have x1 we have x2 so first we have when x1 is 0 yeah x2 mm -hmm. is what 100 next one x1 is 50 x is 0 next x1 is 0 x2 is 80 next x1 is 80 x2 is 0 then this 0 comma 0 we don't need it this is all after and then 40 as x1 and x2 is 0 so this particular table is what we're going to be using to plot our graph this table is what we're going to be needing to plot our graph so looking at it this is how the graph is going to look like we have x2 on the y-axis and x1 on the x-axis. So I'm going to be using these values now to get the points to draw our graph. So for the first one, we have 0 and 100. x1 is 0, then x2 is what? 100. So that is this point. So we have this first point here. Yeah. Second point, x1 is 50 and x2 is 0. So we are going to be taking this point too. The third point, x1 is 80 and x2 is x1 is 0 and x2 is 80 that's going to be here the fourth point x2 is 80 and x1 is 0 x1 is 80 and x2 is 0 sorry and the fifth one x1 is 40 and x2 is 0 which is here so now this phase 2 is for equation 1 so we're going to be drawing this one 0 and 100 together with what this 50 and 0 which is here so you match this together 
you do for the same thing with 0 and 80 and 80 and 0 which is here and here we're going to be joining these two together too and then this last equation since it's just a single equation just one variable it's going to form a straight line so now we're going to draw this now and explain what i did later on so this is it guys 100 and 0 this point together with 50 and 0 this point we have this straight line here 80 and 0 and this 0 and 80 and 80 and 0 these two lines we join them together and then this 40 because there was no x2 it's a single line here so what we are not going to be considering now is how do we know something called the feasible region so feasible region is just a place where a part of this graph that cut across each and every equation like you can each and every function we have cut across it what do i mean so now let's start with the first equation we had initially was we had 2x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 100 so this is that line this was the first equation line we got so this is for equation one this line is for equation two and this line is equation three and if you noticed for the three equations we are having less than or equal to less than or equal to meaning this condition is going to be true for values that are less than this right hand side so what that implies is that each and every of this line the feasible region of each of these equation is going to be inside of those lines because to the back is less than and to the front is greater than if this is a line now every region here is less than while things that are this way is greater than this particular equation of the line so what does that mean, what that means is if for this first equation this line which represents equation one which is 2x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 100 this inside here like this, starting from this plus to this plus is the feasible region but mind you, you are not taking the feasible region for just one line we are taking the feasible region that cuts across each and every of this equation that we are giving so for the first one we know that okay our region is between here this way now we consider the second one x1 plus x2 line this is the second line less than or equal to 80 this is the feasible region for this line but this side that I am touching now does not cut across this particular first equation because it is greater than it so I guess we're considering the ones that cut across the three of them and also for this straight line to this right hand side is greater than and to this other side is less than so meaning for us to consider this third equation this equation three I guess we're considering from year to year so things that are within year is a feasible region for equation three since the inside year is a feasible region for equation one and since the inside year the feasible region for equation two so now considering the one that cut across the three of them we have to start from here then here also this way so this part that i shaded now is the part that cuts across the three of them because yes this line falls here this is less than this other line this is inclusive and even for this one it is inclusive but for this side it is less than this equation two but it is greater than equation one for this side it is less than equation two but it is but it is greater than equation one and also greater than equation three but this side cut across the three of them because it is less than this one because it's inside this triangle it is also less than this one because it's inside this triangle and it's also less than this one because it's still within this space so this shaded portion is what we call the feasible region now after this after you go to your feasible region you're almost done what we need to do is we want to map out the points at where this line meets for this feasible region so here we have our normal 40 comma 0 here 40 comma 0 okay let's just name it line a yes point b point c point d and point e so we named a for this point b for this point c d and e we are taking out that part that cut across all of them this is what we are considering this shaded portion so we have point a b c d e so what we want to do now is find out the coordinates of each of this one and look for the one that would put the value of each of these coordinates in z that will give us the maximum value for z so let's start with point a so let's start with point a now we have what z of a is going to be equal to sorry point a is 
as you can see here, this is 40 comma 0 40 comma 0 point b is if you trace this well if not for your using you know this is just a rough sketch this point should be 20 sorry 0 comma 20 0 comma 20 which is sorry 40 comma 20 sorry 40 comma 20 40 on the x-axis and 20 on the y-axis for this point of c we have 20 comma 60 because if you trace this down you should be touching this 20 and this way it's touching 60 same way as this touching 40 and 20 from here so point d is going to be 0 comma 80 our point c is 20 comma 60 point d is 0 comma 80 and our point c is 0 comma 0 so among these values is now what we want to check which of them is greater than which of them will give us the highest value for x because they were they told us to what find the maximum optimization solution for z so this is x1 and x2 now solving for z we have z is equal to 2x1 plus 2x2 so now you want to consider z of a i'm going to be having what substitute 40 for x1 and 0 for x2 so the answer is going to be what 80 for z of a so now considering z of b we have 2x1 2 into brackets our x1 is 40 plus 2 into brackets 20 sorry this is 3 3x1 so this is 120 instead 120 so this is 3 times 40 which is 120 plus 40 this is 116 so considering z of c we have 3 into 20 plus 2 into 60 3 into 20 is 60 plus this is 120 this is 180 on its own so considering z of d we have 3 into 0 plus 2 into 80 so this is 0 plus 160 this is 160 and our z of e is just going to be z of e is going to be 0 3 into 0 plus 2 into 0 which is going to give us 0 so now between 120 and 160 and 180 and 160 and 0 which among this is greater definitely the 180 so here we can find out that what this particular equation which is z of c has given us the maximum solution for z so we have what z is going to be equal to 180 at point what 20 comma 60 so this is how you solve maximization problem with graphical method in linear programming problems so thank you very much guys if you find it very helpful you can do well to like the video so others can also find it easier to get and do not forget to hit the subscribe button thank you very much